Hey, I'm Kelly Hogan. This video is going to be pretty different from most of the ones that I've done on this channel. I usually interview doctors and nutritionists and fellow carnivores, and I'm normally sitting in the basement of my house in front of a bookshelf. Well, I'm not even in my house. Our family is in the process of relocating, so I'm staying in someone's guest house right now. <laughs> And we're about to move about five minutes from here. About an hour ago, I was walking along the Tuckaseegee River here in the mountains of North Carolina. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I was enjoying some quiet time, just looking at the river and the trees and walking my little dog, Otis. And after several minutes of this quiet, peaceful time, I thought on part of this walk, I could listen to some carnivore content. As many of you know, I am a total carnivore, which means I only eat from the animal kingdom. And the reason I do that is because I used to have a lot of high levels of inflammation in my body. I had boils. I was obese. I felt terrible. And when I cut out more and more of the plants and cut out fiber, and the closer I got to eating only meat, the better I felt, the more weight I lost, and I just had more energy. So I went total carnivore 12 years ago, back in 2009. I met Charles Washington in 2009, Dana Spencer Shute, Dr. Lisa Wiedemann. Shortly after that, I met Amber O'Hearn. And as I met all of these people, I first met them online, and then I have met them also in person, I came to realize, oh gosh, almost immediately I knew I want to be a total carnivore. That's me. I feel my best eating this way. And so when I switched over to all meat with no sweeteners, no sugar, no plants, no fiber, I felt reborn, new person. Okay, so back to my morning walk on the tuxedo. This morning as I was walking along the river and I decided I'm just going to pull up some carnivore content. I just went to YouTube and typed in the word carnivore. And what popped up this morning first was Lily Kane's channel. I have been on her channel before. I watch her on Instagram also. She is awesome. And she was interviewing Dr. Sarah Zaldivar. So I thought this morning, what if I walked and listened? And then I tried to bring to you the best parts that I heard and then encouraged you to go and listen to them when you do have a chance. And I could just share what I learned and how I feel about it from my own 12 years of carnivory. So I was going to come home and fix hair and makeup and then come on here and tell you about it. But then I thought, why don't I do that at the same time? So even if you're not into hair and makeup, it's just me getting ready while I talk through what I learned while listening to carnivore content this morning. You in? Okay, let's get started. I'm not going to talk through a lot of products because I'm not endorsed by anybody including this one that I'm about to share. But one of the first carnivores I met, Dana Spencer Shoot, she runs Zero Carb Health. And on Zero Carb Health, she sells beef tallow and it's carnivore cream. It feels like butter. It is my, I just got it in my hair. <laughs> it is not hair cream. No, that's not good. It is very similar to um, Fancy Farm, which I do also enjoy Fancy Farm. This is their eye cream. I do enjoy their eye cream very much. Well, I do love the Fancy Farm face creams and I'm absolutely obsessed with carnivore cream. I have never in my life found a lip balm or chapstick, she may call it, as good as their super fat. This is from Fancy Farm, super fat. It is unlike any hmm, chapstick I have ever put on. Let's talk about the episode with Lily Kane and Dr. Sarah. Dr. Sarah has her PhD in exercise physiology and nutrition from the University of Miami. She's a licensed dietitian, certified personal trainer, and an American College of Sports Medicine certified exercise physiologist. Okay, so she knows her stuff. Okay, so she went to nutrition school, and of course she was taught, eat all of the plants. And as she started following that advice, she started realizing that she was feeling worse, and she knew something couldn't be right. Some things that I took note of that she said, her triglycerides used to be very high, and she was told that it was genetic, because she would always have high cholesterol levels and high triglycerides. She would need medication to keep them down low. And I know a lot of people are told that. And so Lily asked her, well, now that you've been eating pretty much just meat. She still has some berries about 20% of the days, but 80% of the time it's just meat. And so Lily asked her, how are your cholesterol and triglyceride levels now? And she said that hers are great. But one truth bomb was 75% of people who have heart attacks actually had what doctors call normal levels of LDL. 
So she emphasized in this episode that triglycerides are what should be really low. People with low triglycerides do not tend to have heart attacks and heart issues, especially when their inflammation levels are low. So if your CRP scores are low and your triglyceride levels are low, that statistically means so much more than your LDL and total cholesterol levels. She also talked about the importance of cholesterol when it comes to mental health, vitamin D absorption, balancing your hormones, like cholesterol is good. So for all the people who are constantly messaging saying, oh my gosh, I started a carnivore diet and now my cholesterols are elevated. My doctor is freaking out. Like, here's what matters to me. What does that actually mean in the end? Who lives the longest? What are their cholesterol levels? Statistically, in massive studies, people who live the longest tend to have cholesterol levels, total cholesterol, between 210 and 240. Like 230 is a sweet spot for cholesterol. But if you hit 230, your doctor is probably going to start handing you some statins. Maddening! So Dr. Sarah says that in her opinion, and according to research, inflammation is the problem. And she truly has seen enough to convince her that industrial seed oils, major contributor to the inflammation. You know what has a lot of industrial seed oils in it? Processed foods, just junk. If you are eating only meat, unless you are pouring canola oil in your skillet, don't do that. You are just eating meat, meat from your air fryer, meat from the skillet, meat off the grill, raw meat, whatever it is you're eating. If it's just meat not cooked in seed oils already, your CRP scores are going to plummet. Your inflammation will go down. And without carbs, your triglycerides will go down. And statistically, you are going to be less likely to have any heart issues. Okay, Dr. Sarah was also telling about this study done on rats which I don't put a lot of value in that because I'm not a rat, in which they had a few different types of water. One of them, just water. Another was water infused with cocaine. You know, most of us tend to think of cocaine as being one of the most addictive substances. Another was infused with sugar and then another with artificial sweeteners. The rats would pick the sweet water, sugar and the artificial sweetener water six to eight times more than they would go to the cocaine. So they even increased how much cocaine they were putting in this rat water. No, they would still choose sweetened water, sweetened water. So at least for rats, and I think we can look around at humanity right now and know for everybody else, sugar is addictive. And there are people who will still argue that. Hello, if you are still ingesting it, even though you know it is not good for you, you're addicted. So I think the whole point about talking through addiction was when she was saying, Look, if you're thinking about getting healthy and starting this carnivore diet and you say to me, it's hard. I know we know it's hard. The rats know it's hard. The researchers know it's hard. It's really hard. If you are struggling with sugar cravings, I did just make a video recently on my top 17 ways to make it through sugar cravings. We fully acknowledge this might be hard. If it was really easy, everyone would have already done it. The whole world would be living unaddicted, healthy lives, eating meat, feeling awesome, but they're not because it's easier to just keep eating junk. Dr. Sarah also talked about the ridiculousness of any research, research that says that um, meat is bad. Meat causes cancer, meat is bad. She said, and I knew this from talking to jo Dr. Georgia Eads also, that this research is based almost entirely on food surveys. So it would ask questions like this. How many times in the past 12 months have you eaten pepperoni pizza? Now, I am probably one of the few people, and maybe you are too, who can very easily answer this question. None. But think about, let's say my husband. How many times in the past year has he eaten pepperoni pizza versus cheese pizza? And then they would use data like that to determine that my husband might eat more red meat than some people and that my husband then, if he were to have a heart attack, guess what? They're gonna blame the pepperoni on the pepperoni pizza. That's how they determine that red meat is bad? 
come on was it maybe the crust or was it maybe the soda that somebody washes it down with and when they ask how many burgers did you eat from mcdonald's and then it turns out that people having heart attacks ate way more burgers is it because of the meat patty or because of the fries and the soda and the bread and then the little apple pie afterwards by the way people ask about my pinning my hair up. I just like my hair pinned back. The bangs I've had since I was really little, but I put a bobby pin up and then I crisscross the next one over and just hold like that. Also, I need to touch up my roots right now. So her point about not trusting these food surveys to tell us whether or not meat is good or bad, I wouldn't put any stock in that at all. In fact, the only research that I have seen about eating only meat just came out of Harvard and it surveyed over 2,000 people, all of which said they have eaten a carnivore diet, not a meaty diet with some pizza underneath it, but a carnivore diet for at least six months. And it listed the benefits, which were powerful. I will link to that below. By the way, this is called Instacure. It's made by Matrix. I have no idea what is in it. I buy it at Great Clips. And if your hair is kind of like frizzled out, fuzzy and you don't want to actually wash your hair, you can just spray that in there and it it kind of renews it insecure. So then you're like, oh, now my ends look up a little better. Ta-da, it's almost like I washed it, but I didn't. Okay, be right back. I'm gonna change shirts. Okay. Oops. Oh, check out these little earrings. Adorable, right? Little eggs. Oh my gosh, my friend Laura sent them to me. To summarize what I learned today, Dr. Sarah, I have already subscribed to her channel. If you haven't, I would suggest it. She is very brilliant. So cute. Um, Lily Kane, also highly suggest that you subscribe to her. She has many carnivore guests. Her energy is, I cannot emphasize this enough, very high. Sugar is addictive. Cholesterol can be great. Inflammation, especially with high triglycerides, not great. Research based on people's memory of how much pizza they ate, also not great. And as for how I feel like this video aligns with everything I have read and learned in my 12 years of eating only meat, I am with it 100%. I felt like it was well worth my time. It was encouraging. It was also very reassuring. And if you know anyone who was either considering a carnivore diet or already doing it, and you just want them to hear an opinion of a really smart doctor, send it on, forward it share it. In tomorrow morning, I plan to listen to another podcast or video of excellent carnivore content and bring to you what I have learned. So I'm heading out for the day. I hope you're having a wonderful Thursday and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.